Hi everybody, um, hopefully you can see and hear me okay. Uh, it's been a while. Um, I'll try not to say um too much and I'll try to talk at a normal speed and not repeat myself too much. But hello, my name is Mel. I am the owner and dyer for Big Little Yarn Co. As well as the host of the big, not Big Little Yarn Co., the Cozy Cardigans podcast. It has been a few months since I've last talked to you. Uh, for those of you who are new or unaware, I was in the U.S. with my family just having a nice family vacation time um being with the ones we love and just resting but we are back in japan now for those of you who are watching this for the first time i live in hyogo japan with my husband tim and my son everest and yeah so it's been a while there's a lot of stuff i need to catch you up on but we'll try to not make this into a movie length podcast episode. So I'll just I'll just get started on everything and then maybe I could just put in some books slash life slash yeah, books and life stuff will be at the end. Just really quickly though, I do want to say for Big Little Yarn Co. wise, I am going to be having a little mini update, um, a very limited mini update for Pi Day. Uh, for those of you who were here last year, I did a little mini update for Pi Day last year as well. I made a colorway called Satsumaimo Pie. This is the colorway picture for last year. I'll be kind of... I'm going to be dyeing the samples this weekend for this year's Satsumaimo Pie. I'm pretty sure it's going to look exactly or pretty much the same. So this isn't the most recent photo, but it will be pretty accurate to what it will look like. So I will have sock sets as well as full skein um, in Super Mosh Merino Fingering, Trusty Sock, which is my... 7525 superwash merino nylon sock base and superwash merino DK and non superwash Peruvian fingering. So, just like a little small selection of bases, not my like full entire lineup, but that helps me make a bit more quantity so that you're not all scrambling for it when the time comes. So, I haven't announced it, I don't think I've I think this will be the first time I'm announcing it like into the internet <laughs> for those of you watching this. So just save the date. It will be at uh, Pi Day. So March 14th at 10 a.m. Japan Standard Time. I'll put the corresponding world times here for those of you who are international. Um, but yeah, I hope that you all like this color. I mean, it was really popular last year. I know a lot of people missed out, so hopefully those of you who missed out can snag one this year. But anyways, that's like all the little housekeeping stuff. Um, so I'll just get started on the knitting. So for finished objects, I have quite a few. I have... I technically have five. I only have four on hand because I forgot one in my son's bedroom and he is taking a nap. So I'll talk about what I'm wearing right now. I'm currently wearing one of my FOs. This is the Season Sweater by Ozetta and it's in this really nice half fisherman's rib, very cozy. Um, I used my Big Little Yarn Co. yarn in the Urami colorway, which is one of my Halloween um, spooky summer colorways from last year. It's called Urami, and it's this really dark, not really dark, but I'd say mm, mid to darkish dark, ruby red, I'd say maybe maroon. Um, it's looking a little more reddish on camera. It's, a little more 
purple-ish in real life. But um, anyways, I held my BFL fingering, held that double along with my Surrey Silk Lace, and it made this really nice, squishy, fluffy fabric. And I knit this up super fast because it is in such a thick yarn. I usually work with fingering weight, DK weight type of things for garments. So it was really nice to just be able to knit this quite quickly. Um, let me see, what other things can I talk about? So I knit the size three, which worked out pretty well for me. Um, some mods is one is I always knit shorter arms um, I just have short arms I'm a very short person in general so I have to knit shorter arms so the arms are quite a bit shorter than called for I also I pretty much just knit the decreases as written but didn't do as many decreases if that makes sense so didn't do as many repeats and just kind of um, knit until I hit my wrist and then started the ribbing um, so it is kind of wider than called for in the pattern but I don't really mind that because I tend to prefer my sleeves looser fitting on me than what the pattern usually calls for anyways I don't really like tight fitted sleeves so it worked out um another one is I also knit the yoke a bit deeper uh I think after I followed the instructions it kind of stopped right up here which is quite a bit closer to my armpit area than I'd like to I, I just again prefer looser fitting arms and underarm sections in general so I just knit five more fisherman's rib repeats without any increasing just to make the yoke a little longer and then I split for sleeves and for the body so that is also different and then again I'm a short person so I uh, cut not cut I shortened the body by about 10 centimeters which is about four inches I'll get up and show you so it kind of stops it's a little more cropped my belly button is around here if that helps so it would have been like all the way down here if I didn't crop it so yeah that's that it's pretty much just like a bit of a cropped version of the usual season sweater I've seen some people mainly oh, soft spoken on Instagram she recently has made a season sweater as well and I really want to make another one because hers is most is more baggier and like more oversized than mine is like I feel like mine is a bit more cropped and it's still a little loose and oversized but hers is like even more so and it has that bit of like a grandpa sweater but like in a cute way kind of feel and hers is in like a grayish oatmeal color and I really like that but yeah I have so many I have so many other whips though but that is something that I'm kind of keeping my mind on so yeah this is the one of my FOs from America the season sweater by Ozetta so let me talk about my advent knits so I brought two sweater quantities and two countdown calendars with me to the US and I knit everything which is good so the first countdown calendar I brought with me is my own Big Little Yarn Co countdown calendar last year so 2023's countdown calendar was the theme was the day at the museum so I took inspiration from the Tokyo Museum of Modern Art 
and I took my favorite, I just looked through like their archive and I took my favorite um, paintings and art from Japanese artists and made colorways out of them. For those of you who are wondering when the pre-orders for those will be, I am slotting it into my schedule. I'm just kind of, I already have like plans set up for March and April. I might do like a partial pre-order open in May, possibly, but it's in the docket. I just haven't decided anything yet. I think I'm going to kind of release them a little slowly because it was a bit chaotic releasing 25 colorways all at once last time. So anyways, anyways, anyways. So I made the ingrained shawl by S Knits, um, Sarah Opie of S Knits. And I've had this pattern on my mind for quite a while because I do have other countdown calendars that I have not finished knitting. But I really wanted to finish a project with using my countdown calendar this last year. So I made the green shawl. Here it is. So let me start from the first end. So let me just show you what it looks like. So you start off at this end and then it grows keeps growing and this pink bit is kind of like where it starts to decrease and then you start decreasing decreasing all the way to the end Oop. to the end here so it is quite a long shawl but I like to kind of wrap it around and just kind of tuck in the ends and it makes this really nice big fluffy scarf but I also like to just have it as a lap blanket sometimes so for this pattern you only use 20 mini skeins so I took out let me see I wrote it down I took out my colors my day 1, day 10, day 15 and day 23. I don't have the names, but I'll put the I'll put the names up here of what I took out. Um and I actually gave them to my brother-in-law cuz he started knitting and I didn't really need them in America. So um but yeah, so I started on day 2 and then this and is day 24, but I skipped a day 23 right here. And I don't have the main day 25 skein with me because I also gave that to my brother-in-law, but I'll put a picture here of what day 25 looked like so that you can see. But yeah, this was just a really good mindless potato chippy knit. Um, the instructions were nice and detailed and it was just very like checklisty and that was really nice. I knit this mainly me, my husband Tim, and my brothers-in-law. We all play board games together when we're in America so this was like my board game project. This was very mindless and I could concentrate on winning and just kind of knit while I wait for other people to take their turn. So this was really nice. Um, I'd say my favorite part is either here, but I also really like this pink to orange bit here. And I knit this, I should say, um, in day order. Like I didn't do any reorganizing. I made it so that the day kind of the days kind of lined up in like a kind of like a gradation. Just like it's not really a fade but more so like a color gradation that I thought kind of made sense. So I didn't change or switch any of the dates around. I just knit as each day came and then I took out the four that I mentioned before. So yeah, this was a really fun, good, casual knit that ended up working really well for when I was on vacation. 
And then, okay, let me put this away real quick. I had one more countdown calendar. I had the Naughty Pine Fiber Co. countdown calendar as well. That was like my little personal gift to myself. And I was looking for something to knit. And again, Sarah of S Knits had another countdown project that I immediately saw and I was like, immediately knew that this was what I wanted to make. And so her pattern is originally made for Coast to Coast Fiber Co's Coffee House countdown calendar, um, but she made it so that there were different options. So there was like a, I think like a 24 mini skein option, a 24 mini skein plus the main skein option, and I believe there was one more option, but I chose the 24 mini skein option, and um, because I kind of I kind of cheated and I peeked at the day 25 and saw that it didn't really correspond or like gray date with the day 24 mini skein. So I knew that I wanted the 25, the day 25 main skein to be separate. So anyway, so this is the coffee house fade. Um, 24 skein option. So the fade kind of follows along the same way on the body and the sleeves. Maybe you could see that a little better. And you start, it's top down. Um, you start with the color and work your way down. I uh, didn't change any of the dates. I just followed the days along as they came and it worked out really well. It has this really nice yoke increase. Kind of looks like a braid, but I really like that. And then the sleeves are in reverse stockinette. So these are all purl stitches. What you do is you knit the yoke. Um, so you purl the, where the sleeve stitches are knit the front and the back and then um, once you split for sleeves you can knit your sleeves inside out so you don't have to purl the whole time so you knit the sleeves inside out so that's quite useful um let me think i did quite a few modifications to the sweater in order for it to fit me a little bit better so i wrote it down so I started with the size 9 for the color yoke sleeve count because I did want it to be a bit more on the oversized end. I believe the suggested uh, positive ease was like 4 inches, 3 or 4 inches. I Mine is a little bit bigger than that. I believe mine is about 6 to 8 inches positive ease. Um... But because of, because I chose such a tall, not a tall, a bigger size, I also had to consider the fact that that meant the sleeves and the body length would be quite larger than what I need because although I do want a more oversized garment, I do need it for <laughs> the length to still fit me. So I did kind of a bit of measuring and figured out that sleeves and body-wise, I needed a size 2 for the regard in regards to the length. So, sorry, no, size 2 for the body, size 4 for the sleeves. And the reason why I needed to calculate that is because Sarah has like she has done all the math for you for these 20 if you have 24 schemes she can tell it she calculated where you need to change colors where you need to start the fade like it's just a whole big checklist so that you don't have to do any guesswork so i really wanted to not have to you know figure out like when and where i need to start the fading and like change the color 
for the size 9 but I need the size 2 sleeve length and all this stuff so I just kind of calculated it and then I figured out I need a size 2 length for the body and a size 4 length for the sleeves so I just followed that pre-made checklist that Sarah made um, along and it worked perfectly the lengths are perfect I'm glad I did the math okay um, but yeah very nice an organized pattern like it would have there's so many sizes for you to choose from but it's also very easy to kind of figure out how to combine those kinds of sizes together I don't know how you call it like Sarah has made it really easy to mix and match which I really appreciate so yeah size 9 yoke um and then stitch so i'd say size nine for the yoke and the stitch count for the sleeves and the body for that oversized fit but lengthwise the sleeves are size four and lengthwise the body is a size two so a bit of a little frankenstein sweater but it has worked well and i'm really happy with the result and this was also a really fun knit the only thing I would say was really difficult was that what I didn't really uh, what I didn't really predict was that so at first I figured I'll just knit the body and then do the sleeve so that way you know I'm not juggling like three different mini skeins for each section that I knit because usually I would kind of work on all three parts at the same time if I'm working with just like a single skein of yarn so I didn't want to juggle so I thought okay well I'll just knit the body first finish all the way to day 24 and then go back and knit one sleeve all the way to day 24 and then the other sleeve all the way to day 24 but then I realized that once I balled up that day's yarn and used it for the body I didn't have like a way to relabel that little mini skein if you know what I mean unless I put it in like a ziploc and just like wrote the day for every single day and so I decided in order to keep the days lined up straight I ended up <laughs> I ended up like for example knitting the day 10 on the body taking another and then I had like another small cable and I would knit day 10 on this sleeve and then knit the day 10 on this sleeve so I just kind of like rotated around each bit if you know what I mean so in the end I kind of it was nice because I ended up finishing the sleeves and the body all at the same time in a way because I had to hop between every single bit but also at the same time it was really annoying because I would have to knit the body, knit the sleeve, knit the sleeve, knit the body, knit the sleeve, knit the sleeve. I couldn't just like sit and knit the body for you know however long however many long hours and I'm always having to like hop between bodies and sleeves and making sure that I was working on this sleeve the left sleeve first before I worked on the right sleeve because if I mixed it up then the days would be mixed up so it was a lot of mini skein juggling but I feel like the result was worth it um would I make it again? It would... I could see myself making this again. Maybe modifying the yoke to be a little different or maybe like making the body a little longer so it's not like so... not like a cropped version. Um, but it was really fun. Okay, sorry everybody. My battery died. And then I got stuck doing other stuff. So I think I just finished talking about this and how bit of a little bit chaotic it was to knit it. But anyways, I'm really happy with the knit. I'm really glad I used up the calendar like year of at least. So hopefully I could just move on to the other calendars. Um, I really want to finish them before I buy another one. So that is the Coffee House Fade by S Knits again. And also, if you can hear 
Miss Rachel in the background if he's watching his show for his little TV time. So I apologize if you could hear nursery rhymes in the background. But anyways, this is my last FO. I have not yet blocked it. So it looks okay. I've worn it already, but I have yet to block it. It is the Elizabeth blouse by Petite Knit. And it is in this really nice looking a little orangier here maybe in here it's like the more golden brown color um but yeah it has this double knit collar and it's a v-neck polo top i knit this using isaiah yarn it is, let me find my notes, where have I put my notebook, oh here, so it is knit with Zayer Yarn Alpaca 2 in the color number 3 and Zayer Yarn Silk Mohair in the color 63 and again it's this really lovely brown golden yellow color and I don't usually like knitting with mohair I prefer I much prefer Surrey alpaca hence why I only carry Surrey alpaca in my shop but this mohair actually feels really nice so um I didn't really mod it that much I pretty much knit it to pattern um one thing I did was I knit the collar a bit longer. I don't remember the exact length it calls for, but I did knit it a few centimeters longer because I was reading through the Ravelry project notes and a lot of people mentioned that the back bit, it was hard for it to fold just because it was so short and a lot of people recommended to knit the collar a little bit longer, which I did and I really like. Um, the body length, I actually followed the body length. I wanted it to be a little bit on the longer side. Uh, sleeve length, again, I shortened the sleeve, but I followed the decreases exactly. And I just, it's just, I didn't continue knitting. I just bound off once I finished the decreases. Um, I knit the size 2 and it is like a perfect oversized fit for me. It's super comfy. Um, I'm sure it'll grow a little bit more once I properly block it, but for now it is still oversized and cozy and I really like it. I think that's it. Sorry, I'm like looking down at my notes, but yeah, this was quick and easy and simple. I really like how it looks yeah this one's this one's a quick talk about I haven't knit I don't usually knit petite knit patterns just because some of them aren't science inclusive and I just haven't really seen many patterns that I like I do have some in my bookmarks but not a ton but this was definitely one of the ones that I really liked so I'm glad I got it off my needles and I think it would be really nice for springtime here. It, right now it's a bit too cold to wear. It uh, calls for a sport weight. Um, the Zayer, what's it called? The Alpaca 2 is like a light fingering, almost not lace weight, but I'd say a light fingering plus the mohair makes it a little bit thicker than a fingering weight but not as thick as a DK if that makes sense so yeah this is the uh, Elizabeth blouse by Petit Knit and I do have one more FO but it is my son's clover sweater I don't think I have any FO pics of it but I will put if I do find like an image of it I'll put it here but if not it's not going to be here but just a quick little baby knit like I 
Um, I knit the two, size two year old using Stutuma Soft Lamb, which is like a baby yarn here in Japan. And he doesn't wear it. He th I think he thinks it's too itchy. So I've only gotten it on him like twice, but it's really cute on him. But yeah, so that's the other FO that I currently do not have with me here. But let's move on to the whips. So let me see, I do have a few whips. First off is, so I had a lot of leftovers from my coffee house fade sweater and my ingrain shawl. I have a ton of little random balls, mini skein balls. So I was figuring out what to do with these and I really want to make like a scrappy vest. And I was looking around and I couldn't really find one that I really gravitated towards. But I do have in my library the Slanty Stripes by Emily Curtis of Gently Chaotic Knits. She also has a YouTube channel. She's like full time traveling right now, just living the best life. But I do have her Slanty Stripes top. I believe it's a it's more of a top like a tank top with a v-neck I'll put a picture of her product photo here but I really like the fit of it and the shape of it and the only thing is that I wanted more of it more, more I wanted more of a vest rather than a top so I decided to cast on but I'm going one size up than recommended I believe that with the positive ease recommendation I would be a size 2 but I'm going for a size 3 because I do want to layer stuff underneath um, but I am inching my way there let's see let's make sure things don't fall off so it is a bottom up construction and it's just a if you saw the product photo you can see that the stripes are totally different so I'm totally disregarding the slanty stripes part of the pattern and mostly using it for the kind of uh, construction uh, recipe but this is what I have so far you can see I'm making my own texture and stripes let me see if I can get a good there you go so I'm doing a bit of a slip stitch pattern. So for each color stripe, the first row is a slip one with yarn and back and knit one. And then I knit two, row, two rounds normally. And then I kind of repeat that for every single color. And for the colors, I'm making sure that I start with the lightest color. Let me see if I can. So I start with the lightest color, then I go in with the medium, like a medium tone color, and then I go in with the darkest color, and I'm just kind of repeating that. So it's like random, but not too random. Um, and I'm really liking it so far. And these are <laughs> the ends. I'm probably just gonna braid them all in the end. There's way too many ends for me to deal with. I'm just kind of knotting them in as I go and then I'll probably just braid them all together and just tack it down somehow. I'm not too worried about it because I'm not wearing it as a top. I don't think it would really matter as much if it was a little bit bulkier on this end. But yeah, I'm really liking it. It's a bit of a process but I do really enjoy picking the colors and figuring out what goes next. I might need to, I'm trying to just use what I have from the leftovers that I have from the, the ingrained shawl and the coffee house fade, but I might need to add some more random scraps in, we'll see. I'm going for like a more neutrally, as you can see, striping. I'm not, I took out some of the pinker and orangier scraps that I had. Um, there are some purples and greens in there, but other than that, I'm going for of a new, more neutral palette, as you can see. So we'll see how much yarn I have and whether or not I need to add more. 
But yeah, there's that whip. So let me put that in here. And then another whip that I have is I do have, it's like a half finished object, I guess. And it is the Forest Fruit Socks by Sachiko Bergen. Um, I do have one sock done, as you can see. Um, it is like a little color work, color work and vanilla sock. I really like the motifs and the color work. There is only one size. It's like a one size pattern because of the motifs. It's not a, it's like a non-repeatable motif. So you can't really, oops, my stitch marker fell off. So you can't really um, add or subtract let's, little bits of stitches. Let me show you. So I finished the other leg and I'm going to be starting the heel but so for these since it is only a one size pattern I tried it on and it is a little big for me it's a 72 stitch sock and I usually go for 68 on size one needles um, so I might just like throw them in the wash and hope that they shrink a little bit but the other modification I'm doing is that I'm making the legs shorter. I like my legs to be, or the, yeah, the leg of the sock to be a little shorter on me than what patterns usually call for. So I pretty much just knit two rows before and after the color work section just to have a little bit, but not too much. And then I went ahead and sh went straight into the heel of the sock and it's just a simple slip stitch heel oh and the yarn i forgot is by sorry let me look at my notes apple fiber studio on their gala sock base and it is called november mood and it is this really pretty dark purpley uh with like tints of orange and then the contrast color is actually the day 25 of the Naughty Pine Fiber Co. countdown calendar and it is called let me see it is called shoot I'll put the color <laughs> I'll put the color name on the the screen but they work really well together. So yeah, the, the foot's a bit loose compared to what I'm used to, but I think it'll be okay. I think once I start wearing it and it starts felting, it'll be fine. I do wish that it was a little bit smaller though. But the thing is, so I knit this using the magic loop method on the color work because I was waiting to get my size US 2 9 inch circulars and I didn't want to wait for them so I just went ahead and just knit it with magic loop so it's quite loose when I knit with magic loop on color work at such a small circumference I tend to be I tend to overcompensate and because I don't want to be too tight but then also at the same time I end up just being a bit too loose so it feels quite loose when I touch it on the other hand, for this one, I was able to use the size US2 circulars, so it feels perfect, like such a game changer if you haven't tried small circular, small, small circumference circular needles for color work for like sock knitting, such a game changer. It feels so much better tension wise and it just looks so much better already, but also at the same time, they're different sizes. It's a little, obviously it's a little tighter. You could kind of see here. You see that little overhang? Like there's just this little bit, it's a little bit bigger, but what's a quite a bit different is my row gauge it is significantly different. 
So the cuff is knit with the US one. So the cuffs are the same. So if I line them up, and you could kind of see that here, this other color work that I knit with the Magic Loop method is quite longer compared to what I have that I just knit with the small circumference, nine inch circulars. I'm just gonna pretend that that's fine and my legs will, one leg will be bigger and taller than the other leg, but it'll be covered with pants anyway, so only I will know. But I'm, I don't wanna, it, I wish the, I wish I could just like kind of rip back this way and knit the cuff, re-knit re the cuff or the leg just by itself, but I don't wanna go all the way back and essentially start over an entire sock when I already finished it, so. It's just gonna have to be, but fortunately my gauge is quite different for each sock. But yeah, at least the rest of the foot and stuff will be the same. The only difference would be the sock leg. So yeah, so half half a uh, finished object, but still a work in progress. This is my current train knit. Um, so this is what I take on the train, but I usually work if I'm, since I'm having to do the uh, slip stitch heel, heel flap and gusset, I'll just work on that at home and then work on the foot when I'm out and about. So that is another current whip and I have one more. So this is also another Sachiko, but also a Kiyomi Bergen pattern i'm having a moment but this is the I'm trying to figure out which way is the front but i guess it doesn't really matter it kind of looks the same right now this is the kinsan sweater it is from the pattern book moon and turtle by sachiko and kiyomi bergen um and yeah this is the kinsan sweater i have been trying to knit this since last year since i cast it on a little bit before we left for Japan, I'm not Japan, left for the US. So it's been sitting at home while I was there in the US. So when I came back home, I picked it back up again. But when I left it, I pretty much just did the yoke and split for the sleeves and then I had to leave. So I usually prefer, if you are new here, I prefer to just knit the body just a little bit, like an inch. And then I prefer to knit the sleeves first and then the body last. Well, I prefer to knit the collar and then the sleeves and then the body last. So I finished the collar the other day. They have two options. You could do a folded over, a fold over collar and two by two rib or just a regular two by two rib. And I opted for the regular one. I just don't really like very close tight necklines very much. So I opted for the regular two by two rib. I did a tubular bind off and they also have, if you haven't seen the pattern, they have many different options for the striping. I've talked about this already, but I'll just say really quickly, this is my striping pattern. I'm just doing black gray and then this light gray as the main and then black brown and just kind of alternating the dark gray and the brown bits every other row. So I'm currently working on this sleeve here. And as for the yarn, I'll say really quickly, I'm using Daruma. This is the Airy Wool Alpaca. It is a sport weight base. It is 80% merino and 20% alpaca and it knits up so nicely. It is so soft and so squishy. I really like this yarn. So if you're ever in Japan, I do recommend buying some of this if you're looking for Japanese yarns to try. But yeah, it's been going. I haven't really done much of it to talk about any modifications. I guess the only thing is I calculated, I calculated the sleeve length. And again, I'm knitting the sleeves shorter. So I think I'm doing, let me see if I wrote it down. Yeah, I'm going to decrease every seven rows 
11 times. I think my size is like every seven rows like 13 times or something like that and that's a bit too long for me so I'm just doing less repeats of decreases and we'll see how that goes. But uh, yeah, this is going. This is another knit I've been working on. It's a bit more of a mindless knit if I'm not feeling all of the mini skein juggling from my slanty stripe vest that I'm currently knitting. But yeah, I've been, I, ha I do have other whips, um, but I haven't been working on them and I'm trying to work through what I currently have. So those are my current whips that I'm going through. I also have one more spinning whip actually. Let me see if I can find the bobbin. Where is that thing? Okay, here. So I finished my, my spinning project that I was talking about previously. Let me see if I can find a skein of it. Okay, I got it. So this is an example skein. I do have quite a few more. This is from my last spinning project. It was just a bunch of like, um, tops that I accidentally felted and also this one mystery top that I had. I just blended them all together in a bat and made little nestlets and I have this now. I'm kind of planning on another vest for this um, but we'll see. I'm still thinking of what I want to do with it. So anyways, I am working on a new spinning project and I had all these Sorry, yeah, Evie was having some technical difficulties. Okay, so anyways, I finished that spinning project and I'm currently working on my new spinning project, which is kind of like a mix. It's gonna be a combo spin of these tops that I have that are kind of like reddish, oranges, pur dark purpley kind of colors. So I'm kind of just comboing them all together. My plan is to make singles out of all of these and then do a three ply because I do have three different colorways or so anyways I'll just show you. So first off I have this top. It is a mystery fiber. I don't remember what it is but I did hand dye these so I did this as kind of like a little test to see how to figure out how to dye wool top. And I think it worked out really well. This is Suspiria from my uh, last year's Spooky Summer collection. I just kind of reinterpreted it into a top form. So I really like how this one turned out. So that's going to be one of the singles. The second single is this. It is from... You know, this is actually a mystery company. I got this second hand, so I don't know who the company's name is. But if you see the logo and you recognize it, please let me know. But the colorway is Sunrise Sunset. It's from the Southern their Southern Cross Fiber Club, May 2021. It's the South African Super Fine Wool Top. And I kind of like So this isn't the full thing. I it actually included if you could see this bit of lavendery bluish color was also part of it. I just took out the lavendery bits just so I could keep this purple orange bit because I just wanted that part and I'm gonna use the lavender bit for another project but so I kind of just took this bit and I'm keeping it in this bag and this is gonna be another ply of yarn or another single um, I'm probably just going to uh, separate them lengthwise and just make singles like that. I'm not really too concerned about like color management and things like that. I just kind of want it to be as random as possible. So anyways, the third single is going to be from this. It is the Hello Yarn Coordinate Pack 
from the November 2021 Fiber Club. Again, this is all second hand. This is 85 15 Polworth Tessa Silk. And it's all messed up. It used to be like this nice gradient of like autumnal colors. Let me just show you some examples. I kind of just tore them up or separated them out into these little bits so that I can spin them randomly. So you can kind of see the bit of gradient that it was. It's like dark purple and orange. And it also had another color of lavender, which again, I took out because I'm going to com combine it with the lavender from that other mystery top for another project. So I just kept the darker jewel toned colors. So this is going to be one ply. It's going to be another ply. And then this is going to be another ply. So that's exciting. I'm going to slowly just work my way through, just fill up a bobbin of each and then ply. So I'm currently working through the Hello yarn right now. So this, these are my singles. Sorry, it's getting a bit dark. I'll try to make this quick, it's starting to rain. So I'm trying to like get this to kind of see it. So I'm expecting it to be a little, maybe like, a thicker fingering maybe like a sport weight to a DK once it becomes a three ply sorry it's not it's not focusing at all but hope you can kind of see it um, I'm just pulling out from the bag those little bits and pieces randomly and just spinning it as I go I'm not a very technical spinner I don't really you know I don't really go into the technicalities of it I just like to spin what I like to spin so that is another little whip that I'm currently working on. I'm just going slow and just enjoying the process. I'm not in a rush to finish it or anything like that. Um, so yeah, those are all my whips. Let's move on to acquisitions. I do have a few from the US. So I got a few things for Christmas and I also got myself a little something. Um, let me show you my little Christmas gifts. So I just took a skein from each of the things. I have a sweater quantity of each of these, but I don't want to awkwardly carry it. So one sweater quantity I have is this. This is Cascade Yarns Ecological Wool. And I believe it's like the Ecological Duo. Eco Duo, I believe. And it says it's bulky, but I'd say it's more of a maybe heavy worsted Aran. Wait, this is the color 9023, and it's like a grayish and cream mixed together. It's this nice big chunky, thing. I believe it's a 250 grams. Oop. Will it, there it goes. So 250 grams of this bad boy. I have two of them, so I have 500 grams. I can make a nice little sweater out of it. It's, um, feels pretty nice. It feels not scratchy, but wooly, which is good. And so I have that. I also got the sweater quantity of this. This is Cascade 220 Sport. This is the color mm, 2452. It's this nice green, grassy green, olive green color. And I also have a sweater quantity of this. And I don't usually have plans for when I buy sweater quantities or when I get sweater quantities. I just know how much I need in a sweater. But yeah, I have another one of these. And then I have this Barocco Mochi, which was quite popular like maybe a couple years back. I don't know if people are still knitting with it now, but I always wanted to try it, but I've never got the chance because I live in Japan and it's hard to get here. So this is like a air blown, if you are not familiar, it's an air blown yarn. So it doesn't really have a ply. Let me see if I could, you can kind of see here. It's like an air blown yarn. It's uh, on the thicker side, I'd say worsted or 
even Aaron weight. Um, but they also have these little tweedy bits in it. Let me see if I can fiddle Will it focus. I'm not sure if it is. Sorry if it's not, but you could see these little pops of tweed here, which are really pretty. Um, it is 37% alpaca, 35% nylon, 26% wool, and 2% other fiber, which is mysterious. But it's the color 3248, and I believe it's called aubergine. So you can kind of see that it's like this dark purple color. I also really like their black. They also have a black color that's really nice. And also this cream color that's really pretty. I honestly, all the colors in this mochi line are pretty nice, quite honestly. But I do really like this aubergine one. So this is my other Christmas present. And then I have one more acquisition here. And this was like my own purchase. I got myself a t-shirt quantity of modus operandi fibers mo fibers let me see if it'll there you go and this is for a farnum tea i actually have a plan for this so i have enough to make a farnum tea um which i'll show a picture of here and the base that i got is the silky alpaca dk which is 70 percent baby alpaca 30 percent silk the main color i will use is this lovely green color this is citron citrine um it's this really nice grungy green color and then the contrast color i will use is called honey which is this nice beige color and oh it says what it's dyed with so this is dyed with pomegranate and kutch and citron is dyed with let's see Himalayan rhubarb, which is really interesting. So I think this will make a really nice springtime knit. I think I might want to cast this on next after I'm done with the Kinsan, the other stripy knit, and this is like another stripy knit. So I think I think this is the year of stripes, but I have plans for these. So this is my other acquisition and I think that is it when it comes to knitting um so if you're only here for the knits that's totally fine I will see you next time okay. sorry I just stop one more time okay <laughs> what I was saying was if you want to follow along for the uh for any updates about my upcoming shop updates um, feel free to follow me on Instagram or I'll put my link for my email newsletter down below as well so that you can just click the link and shop when you need to because it is going to be a limited drop for the sock sets and for the skeins. So FYI. Otherwise, okay, so for books, I'm not really sure how to do the to update you on what I've been reading, I guess I could just tell you what I most recently read. If I could find my phone. So last year, 2023, I read 217 books, I believe. And maybe I could do like some kind of little wrap up video for that. If you are interested, please let me know. Otherwise, let me just let you know any recent reads that I really enjoyed. Um, I think January I read 10 books so far for February. Today's the 29th. So today's the last day of February, I think. I read eight books just because I was busy with um, travel and things like that. I didn't I haven't read that much. We were all hanging out with family anyways. So um I guess my most favorite read okay so one of my one five star from January that I really enjoyed was Tress of the Emerald Sea by Brandon Sanderson I really enjoyed that it's my first Brandon Sanderson book um and yeah I really liked it I just loved the tone of it it was funny I loved the plot and yeah it was all around fun um 
he mentions that if you're a fan of The Princess Bride, you'd really enjoy it, which I totally agree with, and I really like The Princess Bride. So if you're interested in that kind of like tone and humor, I highly recommend Tress of the Emerald Sea. I also read um, Yumi and the Nightmare Painter by him as well this month, and I, I'm so sorry, my memory card is dying, my battery is dying, so I'm going to make this quick. I read You, Me, and the Nightmare Painter by Brandon Sanderson, and I didn't like it as much as Trust of the Emerald Sea, but I still really enjoyed it, and I highly recommend it. Um, yeah, I'm just going to have to wrap this up, so I'll catch you all later. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll also write down some other book recs that I have down below if you're interested. I'm so sorry that I have to cut this off really short, but I'm still a mess after all this travel. So I will see you next time. Thank you so much for stopping by and I hope you enjoyed this episode and I hope it wasn't too long and too chaotic and crazy, but um, please let me know what you've been knitting, what you've been watching and reading. Thank you so much. I'll see you next time. Bye.